In this video, we're going to take a quick look at a little Excel spreadsheet that I put together to kind of illustrate that sometimes what we think we know may not actually be a valid interpretation. And there's a lot of reasons for this, including the idea that there's quite a bit of randomness or noise in stock returns. There's also things like optionality, which we may not be able to predict. For example, if you look at Apple's success, a huge portion of Apple's success came from their original iPod, which led to a video iPod, which led to uh, iPhone and iPad and lots of other products that really transformed Apple from a computer company to a consumer electronics company and one of the more successful consumer electronics companies that we've seen. There's also something called the Matthew effect. And the Matthew effect says that initial success can kind of create sometimes what's called reflexivity that can enhance our success going forward. So an example of this might be Tesla. If you think of electronic vehicles, there are some newer companies out there. Rivian just had their IPO a little while ago. Lucid is another one. Um, Ford, General Motors, almost every company now is working on electric vehicles. But Tesla was one of the first companies to come out and mass produce electric vehicles. And they've been able to use that to their advantage. When people think of electric vehicles, Tesla is typically what they're thinking of. So all these things create kind of feedback loops, optionality, um, reflexivity, all these things that give us results that may not always line up with exactly what we expect. So here we've got a spreadsheet. And if you look at this spreadsheet, I'm generating random returns. If you read last week's Substack, you notice this is very similar to what we did last week where we generated random returns. But now I'm just looking out three years. So we've got a 36 month window and I'm saying, okay, let's let the first 500 trials, that's going to be effectively stock A, but it's not just stock A one time through, it's stock A, 500 different variations of stock A. And every time that stock is going to have an expected return of 8% on an annual basis and a standard deviation of 30%. And just as a quick sidebar, 30% is not an unusual standard deviation for a single stock. If you look at this week's Substack, you'll see I've got a list of some different companies out there, and some of their standard deviations are quite a bit higher, some are a little bit lower, but 30% is probably a reasonable ballpark for a standard deviation for a single stock. Now, some companies like a Walmart or Coca-Cola or Pepsi, they're probably gonna have lower standard deviations, but companies like a Tesla or Netflix or things like that probably are going to have a little bit higher standard deviations. So you can set these up to whatever you want. Now what I did is, like I mentioned, stock A has an 8% standard deviation. Stock B has, or not standard deviation, stock A has an 8% expected return. Stock B, which is our next 500 random trials, is going to have a 12% return. Now you might say, well, that's not that big, but 4% return is a huge difference. If you know one stock has a 4% higher expected return for the same level of risk, that's a much better investment opportunity. And so this 4% difference in expected return should translate into stock B being quite a bit better than stock A. And what I've done here is just convert that to monthly returns. So I took the 12th root of 1.08, subtracted off one, and that gives me a monthly return of 0.64%. If I do the same with 12% annual return, that will give me a monthly return of 0.95%. And with standard deviation, it's a little bit different but you take the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of observations. So if we've got monthly observations, that's 12 observations per year. So we divide by the square root of 12. 
So our monthly standard deviation would be 8.66%. Now you can see here in this scenario, this set of trials that I did, stock B did better on average than stock A. You generated an extra $15. Now note, that's gonna vary. So if I go up here to formulas and I click calculate now, you'll see that changes. So each time it changes, but generally it's somewhere in the 10 to $20 range. This one's a little bit higher. It's about $25 difference. This one's $10 difference. So you can see that changes, but you're looking at probably somewhere in the 10 to $25 difference in B outperforming A. But now let's take a look at what happens here. This was just one set of random trials, so you're gonna get a different result if you punch up your own numbers. But what I did was just took all five or all 1,000 trials, 500 from A, 500 from B, and copy pasted the values. Now, when I did that, just real quick, let me go back. What I did is just highlighted all of these returns. I'm just going to do this real quick. take about another 30 seconds here to go through this process and you can see stock B is in green stock A was kind of an orange tint and so once I get all of those I just copy that I go over here I do pay special and I want to do two things. I want to transpose and do values in number formats. Now when I do that, these numbers will all change. So I'm not actually going to hit OK. But actually, let me go over here just so we have enough reference. Pay special, values in number formats, transpose, hit OK. And now you can see I've got the new list here, all these values. And then I'm going to quickly highlight these. This will also allow us to see how it changes from trial to trial. But I want to do a data sort. And I want to do column I, largest to smallest, hit OK. And now you can see, okay, here we have several of stock B up at the top. The exact opposite of what we got. But here our fifth highest outcome is from stock A. Here's another from stock A. These two are both from stock A. So we start seeing several from stock A enter into the picture. Here we have an entire string of stock A. There's five in a row of stock A showing up on there. So what we see is after three years in the top 100 performers, even though B is better on average, 44% of the time, stock A outperforms stock B. 56% of the time, stock B outperforms stock A. That's a pretty substantial pattern where the underperforming stock, the worst stock, actually did better. Now, one thing I do want to mention real quick is I did this with log normal distributions, and that's probably a better fit for stocks than a normal distribution. The reason for that is a normal distribution, your upside and downside are both the same. With a log normal, you allow for that opportunity for more than a 100% return. So stock returns tend to fit more of a log normal pattern than a normal pattern. But if you want to do it with a normal pattern, same setup here. The only difference is I use the normal distribution random return instead of the log normal standard or log normal return. So just changing that distribution. And now you see the numbers. If I hit calculate now, see very similar patterns probably a little less swing. What we see in the log normal 
is the higher the standard deviation that you use, the bigger the potential outcomes, and that's because you just get a few more positive outliers in that skewed return from the log normal distribution. But again, same type pattern here in the top 100. A third of the outcomes turned out to be the low return stock and two thirds turned out to be the high return stock. So don't assume just because stock B has a higher expected return that it's going to generate a higher return. And that's kind of the point of the substat column that I wrote this week. If you're interested, you can take a look at that. Thank you.